Hello and good luck. So I'm going to play Old Faithful here, the English opening. Uh, something's wrong with my page layout, which caused the scroll bar to appear on the right. So that explains why the screen just shifted to the left for those of you watching. Oh, darn it. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I mouse slipped. I'm, I've given my opponent additional time there. Um, let's see. Um, I think knight f3 is a thing here. Oh, and we're into a Slav. Um, okay. Now, granted, I would have been a lot happier with the other thing that happened, but, um, I, hmm, I don't know. It'll serve me well to learn from playing, um, good openings against good opponents. So, uh, here we got bishop f5. My normal retort to that, at least for blitz, is just queen b3. I think that's reasonable. In fact, I think uh, I saw a master playing that way uh, just a moment ago. I forget if this was the same position, um, but I'm carefully avoiding putting my cursor over the c2 square in case my queen does accidentally try to move there. Um, I'm going to avoid doing some dragging and dropping in favor of just click-click move. Uh, at least until such time that I get a different mouse. Um, but yeah, this is what made me hesitate about queen b3. Now, I understand I could play bishop f4, but I am out of my element here. On the other hand, if I don't develop the bishop... Well, First of all, where's the bishop going to go if not f4? Um, I mean, a3, it's going to go somewhere other than um, behind this pawn. So it'd have to go to like b4 or a3 if it's not there. Or it could go to g5. g5 is possible. If I go to g5, he just plays knight e4 here. But in general, it's possible. But here, this seems to gain a tempo. Yeah, you don't want to play that, buddy. You want to find a different move. <laughs> All right. Um, so, somehow we've managed to find our way into something resembling theory. Um, I'm still not sure how to play this. This is pretty weird. My challenge here is that I know, uh, in some lines it makes sense to play c5 and then pawn takes and then try to push b5, but in those lines the bishop doesn't end up on g2. Um, so I'm just really confused as to where I'm supposed to go here. Uh, if I do this c5 push, we trade, he moves his knight, and because the knight's moved I'm not hitting the pawn with tempo. Uh, if I take there, knight takes, and my bishop's attacked. <sighs> um, if I'm doing knight c3, I don't know. I mean, bishop g2 seems to make sense regardless, and I still haven't committed to c5. If I don't play c5, he might play it. Am I afraid of that? Uh, if he plays c5, I take queen takes, I presume. And I take b7, he takes c4. Um, it's mate threat. I do 
knight d2. I think I'm okay. It's not everything I'd ever hoped for. Maybe I just castle in those lines. Um, maybe I have some other response to c5. c5 takes, queen takes, queen takes b7, queen takes c4. Um, I have my d pawn, looks kind of nice. Oh wait, there's no mate here, because my bishop covers that square. So I could just take the rook. So all this amounts to, this is a safe move. Perhaps not the best move, but it's safe. Oh, there was a third reason why I should have considered an immediate c5, and that's he could have just play d takes. And I'm not sure how to evaluate that. Okay. But yeah, having my bishop outside the pawn chain makes some sense here. Um, just in generalities, this seems to be okay. If you look closely at some of the specifics, I'm not sure if this is the right way to go, but... Um, right, so he avoids my silly tactic, which it's not going to work, but... Um, I have managed to cramp his pieces a little bit. Um, well, I've seen a position like this recently. I don't remember what it was that I was supposed to learn from that. Um, uh, specifically, I don't know if knight a3 is better than knight c3. Um, Knight c3 in general makes sense, but I'm concerned about bishop c2. No. The point here is that I can allow the bishop to run into my position because there's nothing he can attack. Um, I wish I could remember what the source game was that I played uh, where I was really afraid of my opponent's bishop coming in and taking my pawns. I think it was myself playing a Slav. Um, and uh, I played some passive moves and later regretted it. Okay, so I really want to break with b5, um, but I need to develop. So I wonder where my big break is going to be in this position. Do I go rook a4, rook b4, trying to hit this? Where else would I go? I don't have any tactical combinations or fireworks with my bishop buried behind this pawn wall here. And as much as I'd want to push b5, that encourages a6, and I don't have a way through. Wait, no. b4, a6, knight d2 is my way in. Knight d2, knight b3, knight a5 hitting the pawn. I've seen this before, again, for my Slav game, where um, this was my the idea I should have seen, um, and I missed it. I still don't remember exactly what that game was, although um, I think there's a open source tool. I don't know if it's done or developed in some kind of alpha state where it can be tried out. I think it is. Um, and there's a language called Chess Query Language, SQL. Um, and the point is you can define patterns like a pawn chain or um, some number of pawns versus some other number of pawns. Um, it's a really powerful language. I just don't know if there exists a working implementation of it. Regardless, yeah. 
thing I learned from my other game is this is actually a viable, viable strategy. Um, so I've trapped his rook on a7. Now he has stopped me from taking that. Um, so uh, that far you could say my plan's been foiled, but in general I think I'm doing well here. Could I just do bishop c7, bishop b6, and get him to move the rook, and then I take here? He skewers me, I take a6. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I don't see where else my bishop would go anyhow. Well... I'm down four and a half minutes, but I think those are four and a half minutes well spent. Um, famous last words, they say, but I mean, this looks decent. It can't be too bad. I'm curious if I could have improved upon what I played. Um... <laughs> So, do I have to take that? If I just defend my d pawn, he takes, I take. He's got no way to attack d4. Uh, if I take and he takes, my e pawn's kind of loose. So, between both of those factors, um, unless there's some tactical consideration, I should just play e3. Is there a tactical reason to avoid playing it? Not that I see. I keep looking, I'm not seeing anything. The only thing that's mildly concerning is this bishop d3 possibility. Um, it's like if I play e3, he goes there, I hit his bishop, he goes back somewhere, presumably. Um, I attack the rook. He takes my bishop, I take back, he moves, I take b7, he skewers me, my knight goes... Well, I don't know, this bishop d3 is actually kind of a problem. Um, oh, but the other thing is, with my plan to try to win the pawn, um, b4 is going to hang. So none of that scheming I'm coming up with is going to work anyhow. I need a better plan. Mm, that's concerning. But yeah, e3 strategically looks reasonable. Um, positionally this looks like a decent thing to do. Uh, even if the e-file opens up, I'm still better position than he is. Because uh, if he moves the b-pawn, I can just take en passant or just take it normally. Um, and if he doesn't move the b-pawn, his rook is in the corner. Yeah, it is babysitting a couple of my pieces, but my bishop does exert influence backward. Uh, whereas this bishop's just kind of lounging about, waiting for the next game, I guess. Or he's waiting for me to, like, play pawn takes on b6. Um, maybe I should have taken e5 and then played this. I still really like the idea of having a pawn on d4, though, and I dislike taking and yielding ground if I don't have to. Um, yeah, it seems the only way I can increase pressure is by, like, doubling my rooks on the a file. So, in response to this, black should just Keep the pressure in the center. Don't open it. Don't close it. Just leave yourself the option to open or close it at any time of your choosing. Yeah, that's premature. 
Um, that's really committal. And because of that, now this bishop doesn't have so many places to go. Uh, so, actually all of his pieces are kind of um, in an awkward position here. Mine aren't much better, but um, pretty happy with this. So, I'm debating, do I play uh, rook a4 or rook a2? Rook a2 would, well, there's a lot of options here. Um, keep in mind that I tend to play open positions, so this is not my bread and butter. Uh, so I'm going to play a little bit. It's going to take me a lot of work to come up with the right idea. Um, but once I find it, it'll be good. Uh, rook a3 is actually the most flexible move. Um, it just unfortunately puts the rook right on that same line with the bishop. I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I think rook a4 is the, the most aggressive move. Although, it's just trying to put my rook in harm's way. I don't see why a2 would be bad. Um, also, is there a way I could just maneuver the knights without having to shuffle the rooks? Like, I see he wants to play rook c8. <sighs> I don't know. There's so much I don't know here. I'm trying to keep in my back pocket the possibility of taking this pawn. Uh, yeah, rook a4 defends this pawn, so I guess from that perspective it makes sense. So now I have the possibility of kicking this rook and then winning the b-pawn. And even if he gets this... Even if I get tripled b-pawns and he gets the one in front, I'm able to um, protect this guy so he doesn't get all three of them. Um, Yeah, so this is definitely asking the question, where am I going? Am I going for a positional grind? Do I go back? Or am I going for something more aggressive? Let's see, this is where prior experience is really helpful. And I'm just really lacking in that, in this position. Um, well, I think this forces me to play bishop b6. I'm not happy playing it, because I think he is going to get back the pawn, but I'm not, this is not my favorite position of all time. So, I get the pawn, I think he gets it back. Um, since I have no way to really forcefully follow this up. Um, but I don't know. This is, I assume this is better than the alternative. If it's not, then I've goofed up. Oh, hang on, I've got this useful bishop f1 thing. That's extremely convenient. Um, let's see, so I've got three attacking. Let's make that four. There's certainly some tense moments here. 
Like, he could take c5 and then play knight g4 to e5. And he's got... Oh yeah, I guess he's got knight d7 also. It's another way to approach that square. Although this encourages me to do b takes. Um, should he capture me? Um, so I'm just going to defend this and... Uh, this does give black a tempo to try to do something clever. I'm not seeing anything clever. Hopefully I've not overlooked anything substantial. Um, I mean, maybe he's got f5, or maybe he's got rook a b8, uh, some way of cleverly activating his pieces. But yeah, that's the most predictable move in the position. Um, and I wasn't really concerned about it. Yeah, rook b3 makes a great deal of sense here. He's trying to double up and apply more pressure. Um... I have to decide, do I take on a6 and allow him to double the rooks? I mean, do I have any choice? Probably not. Uh, if I do take, he could play bishop h3, I just go back. So I think I'm fine. Uh, if bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, bishop h3, b2 still covered, so I'm not getting mated. Uh, so I'm doing okay here. It's a tactical minefield, but I think I've escaped it with a single extra pawn. And thankfully... Oh, he, I'm not sure why he did that. He had rook takes here, too. Oh, that wouldn't work. So yeah, rook takes a6 was best after all. But thankfully, at the end of that combination, I get the C pawn, and I'm attacking the D pawn. If not for this um, little nuance at the end of the combination, uh, this might not be so good for white. Okay, let's pin that. Uh, oh, I'm not winning the bishop. Well, that's disappointing. Um, I guess I'll take another pawn. Unless I've got some way... This check, king h7, doesn't win any material. So yeah, we'll just take the pawn. And so now I'm up three pawns, only two of which are passed. Okay. Yeah, it was a good game. Well played. Um, take some time to analyze this. Uh, oh, we see we got No Joke also looking on. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, Stockfish confirms that after this point, yeah, I, I, I guess I did question rook takes a6, but not for the right reason. Um, this is what actually I was really confused about, is surely black must have had the possibility of doing something other than trading into an endgame, which allows me to take c6 and d5 and just promote everything. Uh, although by that point it's quite difficult anyhow. I guess here where he did knight takes, and closed the position forever, um, denying him any uh, ability to attack my king at all, with three of his pieces still on his back rank, not able to go anywhere useful. Um, that knight takes c5 was just the nail in the coffin. Uh, it's hard to believe at first, but, um, I mean, you could look at the computer's opinion, which is that it just loses a point. And as we saw in the game, it did end up um, forcing black to play rook a c8, 
which would have defended the sea pawn and put him, I don't know, really strung him, um, put him up against the wall and not with very much liberty to do much in the way of attacking. Uh, it, it's always comfortable to exchange until you've done the exchange and you realize, oh, I haven't gotten anything for it. Um, it's really a common mental trap or trick uh, to just do something that'll reduce the pressure in the position and then realize that, you know, maybe there was something better after all. I'm guessing the reason this evaluation dropped from 0.4 to 0.1 is probably because d5 is loose, so I could have just done knight c3. I'm not sure. Um, anyhow, we did get a queen trade. This is kind of a thematic idea. Actually, this really follows a previous game that we've analyzed together already. And this time I did find the idea of moving the king's side knight over to um, queen rook 5. And um, rook a4 is not best. Knight a4 would have been reasonable. I did look at that. I think I even suggested it. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Although, I guess it favors white somehow. If white's threatening anything, I'm not seeing it. Um, but if he's just menacing, well, yeah, I guess I see that. I mean, what's black going to do? Let's suppose we do go with the computer suggestion of rook a8. Then, I mean, what's to follow? I don't know. Maybe you could figure it out. Um, my computer seems to have gone off to lunch, so... Anyhow, um, yeah, I think I played this decently. Um, hopefully that was mildly instructive, if not more so. Um, and I guess I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you around.